It's Wednesday, January 31. In the headlines, security cameras to be installed in JUTC buses. In business news, Jamaica's unemployment rate fell to a new record low of 4.2%. Regionally, VM Wealth Management opens first overseas office in Barbados. And in sports, cricket rising star Shamar Joseph ruled out of international T20 stint due to a toe injury. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Jamaica Urban Transit Company buses will be retrofitted with surveillance cameras to boost passenger safety. Minister of Transport Darrell Vaz told members of parliament on Tuesday that the issue of violence on roads is the main reason for the move. This addition will facilitate close monitoring and recording of activities. This will not only serve to deter potential criminal activity but also assist in incident investigation and resolution. Minister Vaz says special analytics cameras with facial recognition will also be installed at security posts to record any unauthorized dispatching of buses. Furthermore, the JUTC has partnered with Crime Stop to apprehend perpetrators who deliberately vandalize government's property. This is in conjunction with the JUTC's Franchise Protection Department and the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Minister Vaz also informed that a mobile app that will allow commuters to track buses en route will also be developed. This, he says, will inform commuters of alerts, changes or delays. 105 JUTC buses will be refurbished by local dealers to boost the fleet and reduce commuters' wait time. Transport Minister Darrell Vaz explained to the House of Representatives on Tuesday that this will be done on a phased basis as part of the Jamaica Urban Transit Company's bus refurbishing program. Bus delay is a long-standing issue in the daily operation of the state-owned JUTC. Some commuters have complained that they wait for hours to catch a bus. Customer service representatives and posters are often available, but changes in traffic, the number of buses on the route, and mechanical issues have compounded the problem. With an average bus run out of between 175 and 200 units a day, over the years, the JUTC has been severely impacted by an older fleet of buses and a depleting fleet. The average age, Mr. Speaker, is between 14 and 15 years old, and currently there's 194 buses that have been passed by the Ministry of Finance. What is it, Board of Survey? Basically to dispose of them. This rehabilitation initiative is among a raft of strategies Minister Darrell Vaz unveiled during his address. The government remains committed to its promise to upgrade the fleet and modernize the operations of the JUTC by a combination of acquiring more units for the fleet and increasing efficiency using a combination of energy sources such as electric and natural gas units. As a result, in 2023, 70 buses, including four new buses, including 45 diesel, 20 CNG, and five electric buses were purchased. Meanwhile, he says the ministry is preparing documents to present to cabinet, proposing a completely cashless system come April 1, 2024. The Early Childhood Commission is appealing to parents and guardians not to send their children to unregulated early childhood institutions. Ninita Rodney tells us more. The practice of sending children to unregulated early childhood institutions, ECIs, is an act that puts the children and nation at risk. That was one of the points made by Director of Regulations and Monitoring at the ECC, Dr. Tracy and Morgan Smith, while addressing AJIS Think Tank on Tuesday. Dr. Morgan Smith points out that the greatest challenge with the children being at risk come from these institutions operating in obscure areas such as a person's backyard. To our parents and also to stakeholders, so to our parents, 
do not send your children to unregulated early childhood institutions, especially some daycares that people have within their backyard are etched in some corners. Our greatest challenges with our children being at risk comes from those institutions. So I'm asking you to support us. She urges parents, guardians, and the public in general to make a report to the ECC if they observe unregulated operations of ECIs. And if it is that you are seeing unregulated um, behaviors within areas like you see people dropping off people and so on, you are free to call us. We are willing because the law gives us that authority. If we have evidence to think, we can go in. Dr. Morgan Smith also says that parents are free to contact the ECC for information about potential schools they would wish to send their children. Find out about the institution you want to send your child. You're free to call us to ask us about that. Access to Information Act gives you that right to find out about any early childhood institution and how they're operated. Interested persons can call the Early Childhood Commission or visit their website at ecc.gov.jm for more information. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Danita Rodney. The global economy has faced significant challenges, but it is on track for steady growth of 3.1% in 2024 and 3.2% in 2025. According to data from the International Monetary Fund, with well-calibrated and resolute policies, economies can achieve a soft landing. Let's take a look at the World Economic Outlook update for January 2024. And now for more business news, we go over to Denise Williams with the Business Report. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Business Report. I'm Denise Williams, your guide through the latest happenings in the world of business. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, advised that the October 2023 labor force survey shows that Jamaica's unemployment rate fell to a new record low of 4.2% in October, down from 4.5% in both April and July of 2023. 
Statin noted that in October 2023, there was 1,320,400 employed persons in Jamaica, 85,600 more persons relative to October 2021. It is said the unemployment rate of 4.2% is 2.9 percentage points lower than the 7.1% in October 2021 and 0.3 percentage points lower than April 2023 and 0.4 percentage points lower than July 2023. The unemployment rate for males during the period was 3.1% down from 5.4% in October 2021 and 5.4% for females, down from 9% in the comparable quarter in 2021. The Institute noted that in October 2023, there were 1,377,600 persons in the labor force, 48,900 or 3% more persons than in October 2021. There were 738,900 males and 638,700 females in the labor force. The male labor force increased by 24,100 and the female labor force by 24,800. I Create Limited, which is suspended from trading on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, has advised that Mr. Dimitri Adams, who resigned as company secretary, effective December 31, 2023, had opted to remain in office until January 31, 2024. He will officially resign from the post of company secretary with effect from January 31, 2024, having served in this role since 2020. iCreate Limited is currently under receivership due to outstanding debt obligations. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley congratulated the team at the launch of the US $100 million CARICOM Resilience Fund, which is being funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and the CARICOM Development Fund, CDF. By leveraging resources, expertise, and collaborative efforts, the fund aims to make a lasting impact on the region's development landscape. The new US 100 million blended finance vehicle is focused on growth and resilience in the face of climate change, with Jamaica's Cygnus Capital being entrusted as the fund manager for the project. The fund will make investments in resilience, focus small and medium enterprises and critical infrastructure projects through flexible debt and equity investments, targeting six key sectors. These are renewable energy, clean transport, blue economy, sustainable agriculture, information and communication technology, and financial services. During trading on January 30, 2024, the top advancing stocks covered the microfinance, investment banking, and insurance banking sectors on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Access Financial Services Limited shares advanced by 10.71% for a jump of $2.18 to close at $22.53 with 694 shares traded. MFS Capital Partners Limited shares advanced 9.88% for an upward move of 24 cents to close at $2.67 with 2,283 shares traded. Key Insurance Company Limited shares advanced 8.91% for a positive move of 18 cents to close at $2.20 with 11 shares traded. On the declining stocks that traders experienced on January 30, 2024, the top three losers covered the distribution, construction, and health sectors. Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited declined by 10.65% for a slide of 18 cents to close at $1.51 with 77,000 shares traded. Berger Paints Limited declined by 7.32% to fall by 44 cents to close at $5.57 with 430 shares traded. 
Elite Diagnostics Limited declined by 7.23% to slide by 12 cents to close at $1.54 with 57,000 shares traded. Over on the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, for January 30, 2024, trading activity on the first tier market registered a volume of 185,697 shares crossing the floor of the exchange valued at 1.5 million TT dollars. First Caribbean International Bank Limited was the volume leader with 53,000 shares, changing hands for a value of 374,000 TT dollars, followed by National Enterprises Limited with a volume of 39,000 shares being traded for 147,000 TT dollars. Calypso Macro Index Fund was the only active security on the mutual fund market, posting a volume of 315 shares valued at 7,300 TT dollars. Moving from the money moves of investors, executives, and companies, we turn to the Forex market. On January 30, 2024, the Bank of Jamaica reported that US 18.5 million was bought from Forex traders, while US 14.3 million was sold to Forex traders. Buying directly from the Bank of Jamaica, foreign currency traders sold the US dollar for $156.52 and bought the US dollar for $154.74. The difference between the buy and sell rate was $1.78, which represents a profit for Forex traders for every US dollar traded. Canadian Forex traders earned a trading profit of $6.11 from transactions with the Bank of Jamaica. The Canadian dollar was sold at $117.64 and bought for $111.53. For traders looking at the British pound, they pocketed a profit of $6.26, selling the British pound for $202.27 and buying it for $196.01. For our credit report tip of the day, for entrepreneurs, personal credit worthiness is often tied to business financing. A strong credit report can be a catalyst for securing business loans or attracting investors to fuel your entrepreneurial journey. And with that, we wrap up today's business report. I'm Denise Williams, appreciate your company. Stay well informed, stay ahead of the curve. Until our next update, take care. In regional news, Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis says he expects another country to take the lead in a multinational force to quell gang violence in Haiti after Kenya's court barred the deployment of officers from that country. Our news has the details. And while some CARICOM countries have pledged to send officers, including the Bahamas and Jamaica, Davis says CARICOM members cannot do it alone. CARICOM as a community do not have the capacity or the or and or the wherewithal to respond to Haiti's crisis on its own. It needs help. So if it's not Kenya, there'll be some other major um, country that will, will, will come in to assist. CARICOM alone cannot do it. The Bahamas has pledged 150 officers to a multinational force for Haiti, initially led by Kenya with 1,000 police officers. Despite setbacks, Ford Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell notes Kenya's confidence. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Davis says efforts in Haiti are ongoing. I'm advised and they have indicated to me that they have, they have appealed the decision, so we wait the outcome of that, that appeal. In the meantime, efforts are still being made to assist as we can through the eminent persons group. And they are very close, I think, to having some semblance of a pathway. VM Wealth Management Limited has opened its first overseas office in Barbados. CEO Rez Birchinson says the company is bringing its expertise to the local market with an aim to drive financial education and investment know-how among Barbadians. Crystal Hoyt has more. VM Wealth Management Limited has acquired Republic Funds Barbados Incorporated Mutual Funds and has officially opened its doors in Barbados. CEO Rez Butcherson is confident the company can add value. 
we have lots of expertise in the space. The VM group has been around for 145 years in Jamaica. We are, we are experts at what we do in terms of asset management, in terms of investments, but more so, more so driving financial education. Financial literacy needs to be a part of the narrative across the Caribbean going forward. Too many of our persons get to our age when they are not prepared for retirement. They're not saving enough, they're not investing enough. They are wealth creating products that they're not capitalizing on. Adamant that despite the current economic situation, Barbadians must look at their finances. It is because inflation is high. It is because the, the economy is where it is. Why we need to have those conversations? How are we preparing ourselves for the next econ cycle? How are we preparing ourselves for our children's education? Irrespective of the economic environment, we have life goals. We have kids to send to school, we have college education, we have the house to buy. The Barbados office will be led by Barbadian Sean Yearwood. With over 15 years in the financial industry, he outlined his vision. I hope to expand and strengthen the investment culture here in Barbados. And this is really important to me because I really think that Bajans need to know that investing is not only for the wealthy. He noted that Barbadians can also be less fearful of conversations around investing and insurance. The landscape now, because of those things that have happened in the past, there's a lot more security. The regulators are a lot more stringent and these are experts here right now who've been vetted significantly who have great experience i mean the vm group is 145 years old 145 years of helping people of all walks of life you know get forward financially to succeed to build wealth for their families and this is what we want to bring here to barbados crystal hoyt cbc news SKN Newsline confirmed that senior officials of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis attended a meeting this week in Dominica. Discussions were held between European Union representatives and countries of the Eastern Caribbean that have citizenship by investment programs. According to a reliable source, the week-long meeting included meetings with each CBI country in which specific concerns were raised. For some time, the European Union has expressed concern over what they believe are significant security risks posed by these programs. SK Newsline learned that the withdrawal of visa-free access to so-called Schengen countries of Europe is not imminent, but it depends on whether Eastern Caribbean CBI countries address the EU concerns. Meanwhile, the source indicated that the European Union seems adamant about what they want, demanding the following. One, that Caribbean CBI countries price their citizenship in the millions of dollars to reduce the high number of applicants and approvals, and two, that the practice of having unofficial discounting schemes by service providers be stamped out again to reduce high numbers of applicants. According to the source, the European Union representatives acknowledged that the CBI programs were essential to the well-being of Caribbean economies. Nevertheless, the EU expressed concern over the illegal processing and approval of Russian applicants by some Caribbean CBI countries. Special concern also was expressed, according to the source, over a specific service provider developer based on St. Kitts, which is conducting a major CBI project on the island. It is said that the developer service provider has been engaged in an unofficial discounting scheme for the project. The message from the European Union seems to be clear, and that is, Eastern Caribbean CBI countries must implement changes according to the requirements of the European Union, or else lose visa-free access to Shenzhen countries. Meanwhile, Philippe Martinez of MSR Media, who instituted CBI-related legal action against certain parties on St. Kitts, during an MSR digital conference held 23rd January 2024, expressed his views on the matter as a service provider in the SKN CBI program. In a written statement, Martinez wrote, quote, The news that came out of the European Union's meeting yesterday is tremendous. I have warned everyone that these CBI financing and discounting were nothing but a scam in order to sell citizenship in extraordinary high volume at a fraction of the legal price. The European Union has now clearly pointed its finger at these schemes. This is only the beginning to bring law and order into the CBI programs, so the people of these countries can actually benefit from the financial returns of such programs.
I am confident that the actions MSR Media has taken in the U.S. and elsewhere will bring more interesting news within the next few months to come. Those who have broken the CBI laws and international laws have made millions. Clearly now they will have to face the consequences of their actions and wrongdoing. Those who have allowed these illegal schemes to happen and those who still do have created a massive risk to their countries. A new era is now starting, and I'm optimistic because the officials in these countries will not jeopardize their CBI programs and take the risk to lose the privilege of visa-free access into Shenzhen areas." End quote. The CBI financial inflows have been an economic boon for St. Kitts and Nevis. However, some officials and influencers believe the income will substantially decline, and it is critically important that the country diversifies its economy sooner rather than later. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. In sports, we bowl off with cricket. Rising star Shamar Joseph has been ruled out of his international T20 stint with Dubai Capitals due to the toe injury he picked up during the GABA test. He had been due to head straight to the ILT20, having signed with the Capitals before the Australia Tour, but will now return home to recover before travelling to the Pakistan Super League, where he was signed as a replacement player by Peshawar Zalmi. Joseph is unlikely to be short of offers from the T20 leagues around the world after the stunning start to his career. However, in the aftermath of his GABA heroics, Joseph committed to always being available for West Indies duty. The next time Joseph could feature in Test cricket would be in July 2024 in the England three-game test series. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. Thanks for watching.